championships. Only five teams have won the coveted title. Utah, Georgia, UCLA, Alabama, and the defending champions, Florida. Tonight, three former winners, including the Crimson Tide, the Gym Dogs, and the Gators will take to the floor, along with three worthy contenders, Oklahoma, LSU, and Nebraska, who all hope this might finally be their year to break into that exclusive club. The 2014 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship, next. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of the 2014 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Welcome inside the Birmingham Jefferson Convention Center here in Birmingham, Alabama for today's Super Six Finals. My name is Bart Connor. Thanks for joining us for the culmination of what has been an incredible season of collegiate gymnastics. Yesterday, there were a lot of nerves in the pressure pack semifinals because only six of 12 teams would advance through to today's Super Six. Here are the teams who advanced through semifinal number one, Oklahoma, Georgia, and LSU, separated by just four tenths of a point, made it in today's final. In semifinal number two, as predicted, Florida and Alabama advanced, but they tied. And even more surprising was Nebraska, upset Utah, UCLA, and Penn State to earn a final spot into the Super Six Finals today. My name is Bart Connor. I'm joined by Kathy Johnson-Clark, as always. And uh, Kathy, we've been doing this a long time. And I can't remember when I've seen such a wide open field for this NCAA championship. You? And after so much drama during the semifinals, I tell you what, the team that manages the adrenaline surges and the nerves, clearly evident in qualifying, and uses that energy to focus and compete aggressively from first routine to last, because I guarantee it's going to come down to the very last routine. They're the ones, the teams. Florida and Alabama have competed neck and neck all season long, either tying as they did in the semifinals or just thousands of a point separating them. Prior to yesterday's semis, Alabama has gotten the best of Florida every time, and they have a huge advantage with this crowd. It is a home crowd, no doubt about it, and it elevates them and infuses them with confidence and perhaps even sways the judges. They are human, after all. As a team, they had some great moments in the semis, but a few personal disappointments, like Deandra Milner, as defending vault national champion, falling in the anchor position, trying to be perfect. They can and need to be better to win. Florida also had some wonderful events, but when they got to Bean in the third rotation, Bridget Sloan, the usually dynamic, highly competitive, heart and soul of their team, who hoped to defend her all-around and balance Bean title, faltered and was completely distraught afterward. She regrouped enough to fight back for her team on floor exercise, but how she rebounds today and becomes the leader she expects to be could be a game changer. Oklahoma and LSU are the potential teams of destiny. They each are primed for a big breakout meet here. Oklahoma is clean and beautiful, spectacular on beam, and greatly improved on ball. They're capable of much better on bar, so if they're more aggressive and step up there and duplicate how well they performed on floor exercise, they could be in the mix. LSU has some of the biggest gymnastics in the meet, but has to calm the nerves they showed from start to finish during the semis, especially from the last half of their lineup, where you typically see huge scores. Lamencia Hall missed a landing on her final tumbling pass just because she wanted it so badly, and Jesse Jordan, normally great balance beam worker, got really tight with a mix of adrenaline and nerves. If they get loose, though, watch out. Georgia and Nebraska are the Cinderella teams, with Nebraska surprising everyone with a stellar final rotation on beam of all events, putting up four nine nines and just inching past UCLA and Utah to get to the finals. And Georgia made it by overcoming their beam issues, where they will begin competition today. They are the best team in the country on bars, but they were too nervous in semis to swing big and free. If that changes, they'll be that much closer to fulfilling their dream. Take a look at the championship format here. And the NCAA's 12 teams made it here to Birmingham. Just six qualified to today's Super Six Finals, and it's going to be a thriller, as Catchy mentioned. We're going to open up competition here on uneven bars. 
Kaylee Dixon from LSU gets the leadoff spot. Now, Kaylee's an interesting story, one of the top all-arounders in the country, highly ranked all season long, but she had an injury to her foot at the regionals, and so she's only going to do one or perhaps two events here for the Tigers tonight. That really have to for, it forced them into shuffling their lineup around on balance beam and floor exercise. Great job in an opening routine for LSU. Nice dismount, full twisting double back, and a great landing to start the meet off. Mackenzie Capano for Florida will be on the ball. This is a what is known as a four-ring surface. There are four events all going simultaneously. Florida has the same rotation they have in the semifinals. They get to compete Olympic order. They started off really strong in the semis on this event, came up with more stuck landings than really they've done all season long. The leadoff vaulter for Florida, while Kaylee Dixon was doing bars for LSU, was her sister, Bridget Paquata, who had a 9-8. Nice oh. vault. That's the best vault McKenzie has done all season long. She really flared it out at the end, didn't Absolutely. she? Absolutely. And way to bring it when it really counts the most because every routine, every landing, everything is going to count. And you don't want to give away any tenths of a point on the landing. So the Coquato sisters out of Naperville, Illinois, get the Florida gym gate off to a great start. The first two vaults, spectacular. Morgan Reynolds now, the freshman from Athens, Georgia, set to go on the beam. The leadoff performer for Georgia was Mary Beth Box, who nailed a 9.8 in that very pressured leadoff role on beam. This is where Georgia was most impressive in the semifinals. The way they attacked this event, so calm, so aggressive, from start to finish, every single routine. And it took a lot for them to get there. Stepped up their training. Ooh, little bounce break there. After having really some disastrous balance beam rotations in, during the season, they really stepped up their training with pressure sets. Oh, oh no. wow. This is not at all what we saw during semis. They were so tough, so intense, and focused. The whole theme for the Georgia Gym Dogs this year was fight for more. You notice we're going to cover two routines at once because, as we said, it's a four-ring surface. A lot going on here. Anytime a, team is, bars for anytime a team is really stepped up the intensity of their training to get the consistency they need, we want to see if they can hold it through two days of competition. Nice bar set there in the corner. A little bit rattled on the balance beam, but she's pulling herself back together. Of course, each team can drop one low score per rotation. This obviously will be the, the score they will hope to drop if the others can step up in pressure situations and hit. Back handspring layout, step out. Really a little bit off on the leadoff skill, the back handspring into the layout. To vault for Florida. Elena Johnson will go now. Mackenzie Kakata, we saw her. She got a 9 9. Just after her was Rachel Spicer, had a 9 8 2 5. Florida really is a team that doesn't have a weak event anywhere, really. Well, Elena, too, has gotten so good at training around her injury to really peak at the right time right here at Nationals. She had a great semifinals, ended up tying for second in the all-around. With Kat Grable of Arkansas, so. Brittany Ramsey now for LSU on the bars. Just update on the scores there. Haley Dixon had a 9-9 in the leadoff role. Randy Wyrick, a 9-8-7-5. And we saw Jesse George's routine was a 9-8. This is the event where they really had to work hardest on cleaning up their form. They really want to stack up next to Florida and Alabama on this event. It's true. LSU is a leg event team. They're amazing on vault floor and pretty good on beam. So they need to, to hold with the top teams tonight. 
Desiree Stevens now for Nebraska. We mentioned it was a thrill to see them compete with such intensity in the semifinals yesterday and make it into today's Super 6 final. Most people expected it would be either Utah or UCLA. Schleppenbach, their leadoff performer, had a 9.825. Ariel Martin, a 9.8 for Nebraska. There is Bridget Sloan. Elena Johnson before her, a 9.825. Nailed this ball oh. the semis and repeats here. What a vault and a landing. Boy, Florida is really competing extremely well over on vault. Sloan had a 9-9-2-5 in the qualifying round, as I mentioned. Reagan Corville now. One of the top all-arounders in the country was just a little off yesterday. Ended up sixth in the all-around. Was disappointed with that. Brittany Ramsey before her had a 9-9 day. Way to five for the landing. Gave up a little bit. That'll be a tiny deduction there. Corva, one of the most balanced gymnasts in the country. One of the few that's ranked in the top 25 in every event. Beginning with a little bit of a sore ankle. Most of these gymnasts are dinged up a little bit at this point in the season. <laughs> say, who isn't dealing with a little bit of an injury? Sloan at a 9.95, and here's the anchor performer, Keitra Hunter. One and a half twist. Oh! Boom! That's what she's been looking for. Wow. Early in the season, she had an uncanny way of sticking that vault time and a time again, even score a perfect 10 before. Beautiful one and a half twist, just a tiny little hop to the side. Excellent job here. Look for a big score for Keitra Hunter and a big team score for the number one team in the country, the Florida Gym Dogs, off to a great start on ball. Kira Brown on the game for Georgia after Morgan Reynolds had a 9.075. Ashlyn Broussard, Canadian Olympian, came in with a 9.775. Kira Brown had a very shaky performance in the semifinals yesterday. She only a 9-1. But now she's in a position to really, really step up. Pardon me, I misspoke, but Ashwin Broussard was not Canadian Olympian. Pardon me. Broussard from Wilga, World Olympic Gymnastics Academy down in Texas. You can see the determination on her face, so focused and intense. Going for a stick here. One and a half twist. Beautiful job. Much improved from the semifinal. You can see the relief on her face. Sari Morrison now from LSU, and she is a standout on two events for the Tigers. Bars and vault. And this is the routine you want in your anchor position. Big gymnastics, very, very consistent. Tied for fourth in the country in the NCAA ranking, the senior out of Dallas, Texas. Nice job. They're showing much less nerves so far. This is a great event to start a meet on where you can handle nerves. Reagan Corville before her had a 9A, but there are 9 nines for Dixon and Ramsey. And Morrison will get a big score as well. So a great start for LSU on an event that they needed a great start on the bars. But what a season Lindsay Cheek has had for the Georgia Gym oh. She has just been on fire this year. The season has been fantastic. And during the semis, she was lights out. That's the only way to describe it. Every routine she performed, three events, was as perfect as she's been. Hard to believe the senior out of Watkinsville, Georgia. She's finishing up her collegiate career this weekend. Right Holly Blansky 
from Nebraska takes to the floor while the judges confer on balance beam. Jesse Dezeal before her had a 9-8-2-5. So Nebraska has done well there. Three 9-8-2-5s and one 9-8. They haven't broken through to that sort of coveted 9-9 barrier, but uh, solid start for the Cornhuskers. Nebraska's best finish in the NCAAs was fourth place. They had back in 2011, last time they did that. Head coach for the Cornhuskers is Dan Hendick. He's in his 21st year. was very uh, candid the other day in the press conference. He said, anybody who watched us in the uh, practice session on Thursday would have never thought we would have qualified through. They were really sloppy. Yes, he said there. we would have finished last <laughs> had the competition been that day. So he said, it'll, we'll have to see what happens today after they competed so well to get here. Nice job for Holly Blansky, one of the three all-arounders for Nebraska that have really kept them up at the top all year long. Very few teams have three all-arounders in the top 13 in the country. Lindsay Cheek now mounting the beam for Georgia. Kiera Brown, a much improved 9-8-2-5 after the 9-1 in yesterday's semifinals. So enormous pressure here. Lindsay stood on the podium that entire time waiting for the judges to confer. I get a little concerned when they don't come down and just sort of regroup, but she was so intent on just starting this routine. Stayed up there, stayed focused. Dana Durani, the head coach at Georgia, said that Lindsay Cheek has ice in her veins, so if anybody can handle it, it's probably this young lady. Coach Durani said the reason for her success this year is she worked harder than ever in the off season. And that has really paid off. Her fitness is incredible, and it's allowed her to sustain so well through the season. As we join over on the floor, Emily Wong, the anchor performer for Nebraska. Holly Blansky had a 9-8-5. Very nice rhythm in this routine. Well done. Beautiful execution. Has won the 11-time All-American 2014 AAI Award winner for her gymnastics, academics, and community service work. Something like the Heisman Trophy of women's gymnastics, and she earned it here at Banquet a couple of days ago in Birmingham. home you can watch for the little things watch the, the footwork whether the toes are pointed immediately when they lift them off the ground like perfectly straight showing full extension good posture these are the little bitty things that the judges are considering as they evaluate their teams very challenging season for this young lady her father passed away last october after a stroke dedicated this season to her guardian angel, her father. She said a very compelling thing the other day. She said, you know, it's definitely the greatest feeling in the world to know that your dad's proud of you. Yes, absolutely. Oh. This is her Beautiful, beautiful triple twist. Very difficult tumbling run. She lands it so well. And Kaylin Earls has just mounted the beam for Georgia. Lindsay Cheek had a 9.875. So enormous pressure. Remember, six athletes, five scores count, and they have a low score from Reynolds of a 9.075. Kaylin Earls, she's been in this situation before, but you know, Georgia this year has been hot and cold on beam. We've seen them completely collapse, and we've seen them rally. I think what made the difference coming into these national championships, Dana said they went back in the gym after regionals, after after falling, counting a fall, 
and said, what can we do? We are better than this. And they came out with um, something we used to always do, uh, intense pressure sets, but did, had to do 15 in a row, no misses. If anybody missed, the entire team started over the process. Nobody wants to do that. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, that's a serious workload, but that's what gets you ready for this kind of pressure. Little hop on the landing, but a more difficult dismount. Not routine. This job for the senior out of Chicago, Illinois, the two-time All-American. She has realized that this is her senior year, and she told the coaching staff she doesn't want to miss anything. So she is giving everything she has to help the gym dogs to a title this year. Get you on a couple of routines that happened earlier during this four-ring circus. Randy Weirich was the second up for LSU. She followed Kaylee Dixon, who had a 9-9. Beautiful full pirouette right on top of the bar. He almost went too far into that handstand. But an excellent routine with just minor little foot problems throughout, but those are tiny deductions. Well done. And that resulted in a score of 9875. There's Bridget Sloan and the Florida Gators who will leave the floor because they have a bye. Let's take a look at a replay at this incredible vault where Bridget Sloan ties her career high of 995. It's so impressive because of the execution. Your body can't get any straighter than that. It's like an arrow twisting and turning and then finds its point right into the ground for a perfect land. National team fist pumping, saying that's my team. He's in charge of making sure they're ready on vault, and they did a great job there. Leadoff performer for the Florida Gators was Bridget Picotto. And we were covering Kaylee Dixon's routine on the bars. So Picotto, let's take a look at what she did in that leadoff performance. Nice job in the leadoff position. Good, good distance on the horn. A little hop on the on the landing. It really lifts off the table. Gets some good distance. The Picado sisters do their part for the number one ranked Florida Gators. Nice crowd on hand here in Birmingham. And uh, you mentioned at the top of the show that uh, the Crimson Tide has a little bit of an advantage. We're about to hear that you rock. About, I think it's about worth three and a half, four tenths because of the enormous support that they get. and. Uh, they're on the floor getting ready to start their warm up, and I guarantee you, you're right. You're going to hear a roar when they introduce the Crimson Tide. Don't go away. That's the first of six rotations here at the National Championships. When we come back, we'll update you on the results. The NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA. Welcome back inside Birmingham Convention Center. There are the scores after the first rotation. Florida terrific with a 49-4-5. And LSU did themselves solid in the first rotation because they start to fly on the leg events coming up. So they put themselves in a good situation right there. Georgia much better today than could have been on beam. And Nebraska a great start on the floor. So here are our standings after the first rotation. Notice that Alabama and Oklahoma were on a bye. 
So throughout this competition, we will not have all of the teams who have done the same number of events. We'll update you on that in terms of the running scores as well as their average scores to give you a sense of where everybody is. Your impression so far, Kathy, of the first rotation? So far, the biggest impression is that I feel the, the nerves have come down a little bit. The intensity of trying to get out of the semifinals, because that's just a do or die situation. It's a whole different kind of pressure. When you get into the finals, it is time to let loose, um, compete a little more freely, but really aggressively. Put it all out there. You have nothing to lose. You've got to go for it. There's a couple of teams like Oklahoma and LSU who think this just might be their year to earn that coveted team title. Let's take a look at how Oklahoma and LSU plan for success. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Oklahoma, their best championship finish. They've been runner-up twice, including last year, four weeks at number one. LSU, their best championship finish, was fourth way back in 1988. But with six seniors on the roster, they've been ranked Number one, three weeks of the season. And Dee Dee Bro has never been hungrier for a title than she is this year at LSU with the incredible team that she has. All right, well, Laura Lee Foss will kick it off for Alabama on the floor. This is the only event that she competes for the Crimson Tide Championships. Two years scholastic All-American. Is a junior. <laughs> Rebecca Clark opens up for the Oklahoma Sooners on the bars. She's their lead off there. And keep in mind, over on bars, Oklahoma really needs to be better than they were in the semis on this event. They've got to be more aggressive. Caitlin Clark did not stick that first landing. That's one of the things the coaching staff at Oklahoma has been concerned about. More stuck landing on bars. A little bit short on that middle pass. Ariel Martin. We up for Nebraska on the vault. The leadoff performer there, Jenny Lang. At a 9.8. Wow, good landings, both boxes, <laughs> right at the same time. Pretty amazing. Listen to the crowd. That is the leadoff routine, and they're already on their feet. Roy Mincia Hall. She's, of course, renowned for her floor exercise work, but she usually contributes on beam for LSU as well. Edie Bro has had to make some lineup adjustments as a result of. Uh, Haley Dixon's foot injury, and that has uh, thrown them into a little bit of a tailspin here late in the season, hasn't it? The, the trickiest part is the first half of the lineup is finding your leadoff performer on this event and a good solid second position. Little check after that layout step out. I love DV Bro is uh, one of the most quotable women coaches in gymnastics. And we asked her yesterday, what did you think of the meet? She goes, that was our worst meet all year. We got tight, we didn't do our best. <laughs> Now, they were absolutely nervous. You could see it visibly, really. But, uh... And one of the journalists in the press conference says, well, you think the gymnasts were afraid? And she goes, are you kidding? We eat fear. <laughs> I just love Dee And I think that she's got them in a place where they have a legitimate chance at shooting for that championship this year. Nice double back dismount. Good landing. And Dee Bro is happy with that. <laughs> Blow in her 37th year. The longest tenured coach in the SEC, and there's her associate head coach, Jay Clark, happy as well. They had a big disappointment in this very building a month ago when they did not perform up to their expectations at the SEC championship. They said they weren't composed and they were just trying too hard. 
Katie Bailey will be the next gymnast to go for Alabama. What a contributor oh. she has been in her freshman season. Freshman. And so poised for a freshman. Ranked Very. 20th in the country in the all around. Very calm, did, did a great job in the semifinals on all four events. Laura Lee Frost opened up with a 9-8-2-5. Let's see what Katie Bailey can contribute. Emily Wong on the vault for Nebraska. Nice setup before that twist and the full little bit of a bike position in the air. I love this with all four events going on simultaneously. It's a lot of crazy it's exciting. Great facial expression throughout the routine really gets into the performance. Well done. The judges really are looking for a little more control on the landing, though. They want to see him land two feet, show control before going into the lounge, or just stay in that stuck position. Moments ago, Sydney Ewing mounted the beam for LSU for her Loimintia Hall had a 9-8-2-5 Katie Dixon a 9-8-2-5 yes I forgot she actually was going to compete on beam it surprised me because of the type of injury she had you would think there was no way we could work on the balance beam but she did a great job Tom Cranter Fasher for Katie Dixon gave him a great score Haley Scheman for the Sooners on bars. Before her, Erica Brewer banked a 9.9. Mackenzie Wofford, 9.875. And Rebecca Clark, a 9.825. Oklahoma, a much better job so far. Don't know why she took that little step forward. Needed to fight a little bit more to cover up the imperfect landing and not give away a 10 foot point. Zeal on vault and Holly Blansky before her in 9875. We saw Emily. Wow! <laughs> That's the kind of landing that feels really good. And Nebraska has scores ranging from 98 all the way to 9875. This one will be bigger than that. She lands with her feet slightly apart. We've been talking about that. Um, whether no that should be a deduction. deduction they, they don't right. have a specific deduction, but, but right. honestly, it, it should be a deduction. We'll see what happens with the score. A few minutes ago, Erica Brewer for the Sooners, and she has been struggling with injuries all season long, and particularly the strained elbow that has really uh, affected the All-American on this event. Junior out of Kentucky, known to outwork everybody else in the gym. And that routine that is good for a 9 9. That's the kind of landing that Coach Lou Ball, the husband of AJ Kinner, the head coach of the Sooners, wanted. <laughs> Ashley Nat on the beam now for. LSU Tigers, Sydney Ewing a 9875. So LSU doing well on being two 9825s and a 9875. Ashley works being so beautifully. She really is a natural here. Great athlete, but a good combination. She has a lot of power. 
about a great athlete. Her father was a yeah. gymnast at LSU. Her mother was a 1972 Olympian. Her name is Ashley Knapp. They call her Bugs. Just a freshman on Lake Mary, Florida, having a terrific freshman season. Oh, absolutely. She has scored huge for the oh no on this event. A little slip up there. Said she's so springy, sometimes she just jumps out of her skin. <laughs> nice little step out, got her composure back. So far, it's just that one little slip up on the landing out of the straddle jump. Double twist, not quite a stuck landing, but a really nice routine. They'll have to take the deduction on the jump. Four solid scores for LSU on the beam. Floor now. Lauren Beers just before her. Sarah DeMeo notched a 995. Katie Bailey a 9875. And Laura Lee Foss a Sophomore out of Warren Center, Pennsylvania. Ranked 10th in the country on the vault, but she gave us a thrill on the floor, and the home crowd loves it. Reagan Corville now for LSU on the beam. Ashley Nat had a 9-8. Yesterday in the semis, of all things, we saw this young lady look just a little bit uptight on this event. Didn't she it? was very nervous, and it was it was obvious you could see her get tight, longer concentration before her skills. Just like this one, beautiful move. Oh. Standing Arabian, that's better than she's done it all weekend. She is fearless. Last year she was the NCAA all around runner up. She was the vault champion this year fell to a disappointing sixth place in the all-around. Watch her back leg on that knee just a little bit. It's the tiny little things. But where she excels, she's just unusually talented. I like the combination of quality she possesses. Nice flexibility. Wonderful skills. Good combination here right into the dismount. Oh! Feet. All right, back to the floor now. Kim Jacob, you hear Sweet Home Alabama in the background, so <laughs> that can be only one person. The young lady who just yesterday became the NCAA all-around champion had a spectacular meet. And it couldn't have happened to a nicer person. She's such a hard worker, great team athlete. Really student. selfless student athlete too. Great in the classroom, great in the gym. Wonderful role model for young gymnasts coming in. Three times the SEC Scholar Athlete of the Year. Besides the fact that he, she's ranked 14th in the country in the all-around, she came through to get the championship.
Big routines and big scores before her. Sarah DeMeo, a 9.95. Lauren Beers, a 9.95. DeMeo, by the way, is a career high. And Beers tied her career high. This was her open tumbling run. over to the uneven bars for the Oklahoma Sooners. This happened a few minutes ago. Ely Kamichek, their fifth performer out of six. Sophomore out of Naperville, Illinois. Much better job. There's the landing. Starting to get him. That turned out to be a stuck landing and led to a career high for Kamichek in 9.95. Deandra Milliner, the stage is set. There are three 9.95s because Kim Jacob just earned one as well. Coming into this young lady who is. Oh, drilled it. You think she senses that there could be a 10? With three nine nines in front of her. Oh, I don't even think it's crossed her mind. Are you kidding me? <laughs> of course. Senior out of Wichita, Kansas. She's seen a ten before. Six-time All-American. She has scored 9.95 nine, on floor exercise. The perfect 10 that she did earn was on the vault. She remains as the 2013 NCAA vault champion. First and third passes, the landings were incredible. <laughs> Particularly that open tumbling run. Yeah, she just drilled it. Drilled it right into a perfect landing. It's the kind of landing where you're, the fillings in your teeth kind of fall. <laughs> That's incredible. Yes, this was gorgeous, and they're not easy to stick. Look, this was the middle tumbling pass. I thought it was a little bit low in the landing, just a little funky. Be interesting to see if they take the deduction there on that landing. And it there didn't it take is. Much. The fourth 995 in a row. So the Crimson Tide lights it up on floor in the first rotation. While that was going on, Jesse Jordan on the beam for LSU, the junior out of Houston, Texas. And yesterday, she also looked uncomfortable up here. She did. She got tight. Let the nerves um, just mess with her a little bit. It's hard. It's hard not to. Make six in the country on this event. As Didi had said in the press conference, I mean, starting with regionals. Regionals is such an intense competition on these teams. Just trying to get through. And then, of course, at the semifinals, you just want to get through and be on the floor in the Super Six to have a chance at the national championship. She looks much better here. Megan Corville before her had a 9-9. LSU has told us this year, if they get two 9-9s in B and stick four vaults, they think they can win. So they don't have, they have one 9-9 and a one nine eight seven five from Sydney Ewing. So a 9-9 on beam would bode well for the Tigers here. If Jordan could hit it. Not really a bobble, just a slight check before standing up out of that side summer. This is the calm I'm used to seeing from Jesse Jordan. Nice and cool. done on the dismount. Oh, that feels much better. And in qualifying. And that resulted in a 9-9 for Jesse Jordan. Holly Blansky from Nebraska was on the vault while that was going on. Big vault. Nebraska's doing themselves solid here. 
in this Super 6 final. The best part was the landing on this. She had, she had pretty good height and distance. A little bit of pike in this position right here. She comes down. She pikes down a little bit. Anchor performer for the Sooners on bars is Taylor Spears. Kayla Kamichek at 995, her career high. They have one other 99 in Erica Brewer. But when we think of the other bar teams, um, like Florida, say Florida, who we're gonna see, and they do huge releases, huge bar routines. And very, very clean execution. These are the kind of things that are going to separate. Nice routine by Taylor Spears. And she is well known for being polished, particularly on events like bars and beam. She was rewarded for her clean execution. 9925 there. Sarah DeMeo now for Alabama on the floor. What a season she's had, kind of up and down. I mean, had to deal with uh, an injury, a whiplash type concussion that kept her out of competition and training. For a few weeks in the middle of the weeks. season, right? Missed a release move off the uneven box. Three time All American in her senior year, Overland Park, Kansas. But what a way to come back here. Besides the good gymnastics we're seeing from her, to see her enthusiasm and just genuine thrill of being on the floor competing. Her career best is at 9.925. She got that at home against Georgia. And then again, once on the road at Auburn. Gorgeous. So few deductions in this routine. She's so clean. Her footwork. Excellent. This was absolutely gorgeous. Really lifts up off the floor, finds that landing, and doesn't move. Worked so hard to get herself back into the lineup. We await the results in the second rotation of six here at the NCAA championships. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. 
out of the scores in the second rotation. The Oklahoma Sooners, 0.25 higher than their semifinal score on bar, so they did themselves solid there. LSU stronger on beam by 0.15 than yesterday. And Alabama a tenth higher on floor. So keep in mind, LSU and Nebraska have done two events. The other four teams have only done one event. We open up this rotation on the beam with Madison Moore in Oklahoma. This is where Oklahoma really has to capitalize on their strengths. They are excellent on this event in every way. One of the most consistent beam teams in the country. But also so lovely. Good Aitlin level. Clark for, for Alabama on vault at the same time. Ooh, big distance. Oh! Look how far from the table she landed that and came up with the landing she of a lifetime. In <laughs> Birmingham and landed in Tuscaloosa. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at the emotion that that brings up. What a thrill. Look at the pressure that puts under Madison Mooring because she's on the beam simultaneously while the crowd erupts for Alabama. Nice job, just a little bit tight on that full turn. Slight little balance check, but everything else was well done. Nice start for Oklahoma on beam. Good job for the two-time All-American on a Salisaw, Oklahoma. Let's see how much height she got as well. Lifts up off the table, nice height, good dynamics on this vault. Head is at the level of the table when she finishes. The twist, huge distance, and a great landing. It's a Coquato for Florida on the bars now. Florida got off to an awesome start on Vol. Let's see what they can do on this event. We were watching them in training the other day, and they just seem to be in a class of their own here in terms of execution, precision, and form. They are spectacular. Everything is so huge, way up above the bar. Hits every handstand. But you got to see if the judges are going to give them, give them the credit that is due them for going above and beyond. That's the tricky part because all this, all the routines are scored from a 10. And though they're not all created equally, they are judged from a 10. So they cannot afford to not stick landings. They, they have to hit. Sarah DeMeo was huge for Alabama on floor. Caitlin Clark in the leadoff role had a 9-9-2-5. Aidy Bailey a 9-9. DeMeo's up third. <laughs> Great distance. Had, had to hop a little bit. There was so much energy behind <laughs> that vault. It was really hard to glue her feet to the mat. Ashlyn Broussard now for Georgia on floor. Their leadoff performer, Morgan Reynolds, had a 9.825. Petra Hunter for Florida on the bars simultaneously. Bridget Coquato before her had a 9.95, and Bianca Dancos Giambattista a 9.9. So Florida, spectacular over there. And another stick yes, they are for the Gators. So well over there. You mentioned even if you're better on paper, you can't give away unstuck landings. Yeah. And still intend to challenge, especially as no. hot as Alabama is. Because they have four nine nine fives on floor for Alabama. That's put a lot of pressure on everyone. But Kim Jacob, what a vault! What a weekend that young lady is having. By the way, Sarah DeMeo before her a nine eight five.
KJ Kindler, head coach at Oklahoma, has an interesting distinction. She's the only coach in the NCAA to take two different teams to the Super Six Finals. She did it with Iowa State when she was the head coach there. And now with the Sooners. And I love this routine. I love how she goes through the routine. Every single gymnast, she, she names every single skill, gives them their, their cues, their tips, and then relaxes them and sends them on their way. That's Erica Brewer for the Sooners. Ella Levon before her had a 9-9. Allison Morin with 9-8-7-5. Lauren Beers for Alabama on the vault. Kim Jacob before her was a 9-8-7-5. Oh, my. Wow. Wow. <laughs> she wasn't going to move her feet, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm not sure she could. I... She's like, wow, I'm not yes. going anywhere, am I? <laughs> going to make sure they know I stuck this She sure <laughs> did. I like that style. Brewer was great for Oklahoma. On bars, looked a little tentative on that jump. Yeah, didn't quite get the full split in the air. Not too many gymnasts in NCAA competition have the guts to go for a double back off beam. You could do an easier dismount and get a good score. So good job there for Brewer. Bridget Sloan now for Florida. She Peter Hunter before her at a 9.875. She was huge on this event in the semis. Scored a 9.95, hitting every single element. Don't want to miss Deandra Milliner on vault. Lauren Beer oh. before her at a 9.9. Nine. One and a half twist. Oh. Huge. Oh, she took a step forward, but it was a beautiful vault in the air, and she was making sure she didn't come up short, trying to stick that ball. Double layout. Tries to hold that stuck position before she steps back to salute the judge. They are fighting, and fighting, Milliner was, fighting. <laughs> Milliner was dejected yesterday after trying so hard to stick that ball. She landed on her seat. So you're right. This is the kind of this is the way. If you're going to make a mistake, you got to overdo it and take a step forward because uh, it's a minor deduction for a step like that. Beautiful height. Alabama has two nine nines over there in Katie Bailey and Lauren Beers. Three, excuse me, Caitlin Clark had a nine nine two five in the leadoff. So back to the beam now. Kara Levon, the four foot eight freshman of Iowa for the Sooners. of the week, going for her clean form. Nice combination into the dismount. Standing layout step out into the full. Back to the bars now for the Florida Gators. Elena Johnson. Score for Bridget Sloan was a 9-9. And this can be a highlight routine. It's so beautiful. I love the technique. Nice execution. Johnson is in the anchor performance. Mackenzie Cabrado before her a 9.95. So, so far, four scores over 9.9. Nine, nine, and another big score for Florida <laughs> on an event where they excel. She's so elegant on this event. It's not just explosive with the amplitude on the skills and the execution. 
toe point leg straight. Ten time All American. Former national team member Elena Johnson. Next up on the beam for the Sooners, Chase Caps. She's just a freshman and here watching her in the semifinals. I know you like her style. I think she's, she really presents well. Of course, she has a competitive dance background, so she's not unused to being on the stage. Big 12 newcomer. working out of the layout, step out into it, a jump. Kaylin Earls from Georgia on the floor. Mary Beth Box before her at a 9.85. is the event where Georgia doesn't have really huge scores. So they'll have to get the best scores they can based on clean execution. Chase Kapp thrilled with her routine. They can keep themselves in the mix, but hitting landings is crucial. Pike double back. Well done. Mackenzie Caguado for Florida now in the bars. Bridget Sloan before her a 9-9. Her sister had a 9-9-5. Let's see if there's a little sibling rivalry. Anything you can do, I can do better. Well, she's got the goods, that's for sure, in the clean form. Hard-pressed to find deductions in this routine. If she can just stick the landing, there it is. She has scored perfect tens in the past on this event. Taylor Spears for the Sooners now. Chase Caps before her. A 9-9. So there's two 9-9s for the Sooners, Kara Levon and Chase Caps. A 9-8-2-5 for Erica Brewer and a 9-8-7-5 for Madison Mooring. And ordinarily, these would be great scores, but keep in mind, Alabama put up four 9-9-5s on the floor exercise. Randy J takes to the floor now for the gym dogs. Kaylin Earls before her, a 9-8-5. Watch this tumbling run. It's always so much fun, so much power, and a lot going on. Two flips, twist on the last one. Coach Durandy, particularly proud of Brandy J this year. She has struggled with several injuries, and so to have her competing at this high level at this important competition gives Coach Durandy a lot of pride. Very pretty good routine for Oklahoma.
Good routine, a little bit awkward on the last landing on the final tumbling run. Two-time All-American, proud though. Absolutely, she landed in this double pike, just a little bit in that, still in that pike position, kind of jolted her, didn't quite get the perfect landing. Katie Bailey now for Alabama on the vault. Caitlin Clark in the leadoff had a 9-9-2-5. Very elegant vault. If you can call a vault elegant, it was. Very stretched out and a nice landing on that half twist. Different than many of the vaults we've seen. We've seen so many Yurchenko falls, a few one and a half twists. This is a layout with a half twist, spots the landing right there. But it's really a blind landing. She does it quite well. Just a little check. Rebecca Clark now the anchor performer for the Sooners on the beam. Taylor Spears had a 9-9-2-5. So the Sooners have two 9-9s and a 9-9-2-5. Clark has big potential here as well. Really excellent scores, actually, thus far on, on Don's beam. She had only a 9-7 in the semifinal. A little uncharacteristic for her, a lady who's ranked 14th in the country in the NCAA in this event. It's one of the dynamics here at the NCAA is because in the semifinal qualifying rounds, they're also earning All-American status by finishing in the top four in each session on each event, they're trying to qualify for all around and event finals at the same time when team is really their priority, but it's, it's a tough mix of, of pressure, really. Very decided somersault, though. Here's a young lady who's coming back from a dislocated knee injury two years ago. Much better routine this time around. One and a half twist, nice landing. Coach KJ Kindler relieved with her team on the beam. Often championships like this come down to balance beam consistency. Bianca Dancos Giambattisto, leadoff performer for the Gators, on an event where they are just incredible. They are incredible, and I love to watch the leadoff performer. It's really the routine that sets the stage, sets the pace, gets the momentum started, as you will. So you want somebody who's always rock solid. You count on to come up with landings like that. That's a, that's a good start off routine. 11-time Canadian national team member. She's competed in the World Championship before. Great start for the Gators on a great event. And we'll be back with more from the NCAA Gymnastics Championships. We'll update you on the scores. Don't go away. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Here are the results in that third rotation. Alabama, 49-475 in the vault. Florida, incredible, 49-6 on bars. Oklahoma, a huge 49-525 on beam. Georgia 49-175 floor. LSU and Nebraska on buys during that rotation. This is the first time in 5,000s behind. LSU, Nebraska, and Georgia. The top six in the Super Six Finals. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup standings update as teams compete for a combined $400,000 scholarship donation from Capital One. The Capital One Cup is awarded annually to the best Division One 
college athletic program in the country. Points are earned throughout the year based on final standings of NCAA championships and final official coaches polls. One winning men's and one winning women's program will be crowned after the completion of the final NCAA spring championships. Sari Morrison trying to get the LSU fans into this. These fans in the SEC, they travel well. They go support their teams. Claire Boyce will be up for Florida on the balance beam. And this is a huge rotation for so many of the teams. A critical point in the competition for Florida on this event. This is where in the semis, in the middle of the rotation, they had the problem with Bridget Sloan falling and having to come back. At, the, the wheels almost completely came off, um, but they salve and it starts right here with Claire Boyce and the leadoff routine. She has been so good throughout the season. There have been a couple times she has faltered, and so far so good. Texas Dreams, where she was coached by former world all-around champion Kim Zemesco Burdett. That's good technical. Precise. I love her down on the beam work. She was out for a couple of years with leg surgery, so Coach Fain said they have to be cautious with her. But most of these young ladies, they're managing their bodies through a long regular season and then Conference championship, regional championship, semifinal here, and now team final. It's a grueling season. It's the most important part, managing their bodies, the long season. Well done. Good to see a smile on her face. Always nice to have a leadoff performance on beam. In the bank. Desiree Stevens from Nebraska on the bars. Junior at Omaha. Oh. oh! Unfortunately, I'm I'm not surprised. They when I watched them in workouts, mm. saw several misses on release moves and different elements. And, and at this point, you really need to see more consistency, even in the workouts just prior to in the warm-ups. Nebraska five tenths of a point off of the ball. Rejoins the team short on that handstand. Then you really got to get your momentum going again. Finish strong. You just wonder if fatigue is a factor because these teams were competing, you know, late last night, and obviously with a lot of emotion, trying to qualify into the uh, session here. Rachel Spicer now for Florida on the beam. Claire Boyce in that leadoff roll nine eight seven five. Well, we talked about how long this competition is with the six rotations, um, and it, it is. It takes a physical toll on them. We saw it on Florida in the final event for exercise. Really hard to come up with a landing. So Alabama got to start on floor and ball, get those out of the way early in the evening. Florida has to finish on beam and floor and come up with the leg events. Cat hires for Georgia on the ball. Chelsea Davis before her at a 9-8. And Morgan Reynolds, the leadoff walker for Georgia, 9-7-7-5. Another good routine. Well done for Florida. You know, it's interesting, last year, we noticed that Florida had a particular swagger last year that we hadn't seen previously. I'm not sure I saw it in the semifinals. Have you seen it? No, but that? I didn't see it from anybody, really. Right. So it wasn't just exclusive to Florida. I felt everyone was feeling the pressure of getting through the semis. This is a much more competitive um, gymnastics championships. It just is.
Lindsay Cheek. Be the next Walter for the Gym Dogs. Cat hires before her a 985. This is as intense a competitor as you will see. You can see it in her eyes and her body language. And she made it happen so well in the semis. And she wants to repeat here. This could be huge for Georgia. She's got giant amplitude. Whoa! Look at that beautiful controlled landing. I mean, that is a tough competitor. Exactly what you want in that position. 2014 SEC Events Specialist of the Year. And what's nice to hear is that she has developed into a much more of a team athlete as well. Really, really help becoming a leader on the team and, and contributing in that way as well, not just with her gymnastics and great performances. <laughs> And high fives from Philip Ogletree, the assistant at Georgia. Jessica Savona now for LSU on the floor. Jesse Jordan led him off with a 9-8. Ashley Knapp, a 9-8-7-5. And this is some of the most difficult tumbling you'll see in the competition. Very powerful tumbler. Combination pass, one and a half twist through to a tuck double back. Randy J setting up for the vault. Lindsay Cheek Big banked a 995. Big potential here, one and a half twist. Oh! oh. oh. It was an wow. odd. One. Let's see that one again. Oh. She, she typically stunned. does a one and a half twist. Right. A sophomore out of Ontario, Canada, six time member of their Canadian national team, was the first alternate on the Canadian Olympic team. And here's a young lady who's come back from her second ACL tear back in 2011 to be a contributing member. Bridget Sloan. Now, this will be interesting okay. because last year we said that she was the game changer for Florida in terms of her contribution as an athlete, in terms of her contribution in spirit and energy and enthusiasm. We saw her buckle a little bit, uncharacteristically, on beam, which cost her the all-around title. Let's see how aggressive she is today. She can be so perfect on this event, just like that. Gorgeous, and her concentration, and the way she gets into a rhythm is just impeccable. This is the Bridget Sloan we used to see. Very much in control. No fear. No holding back. It's interesting because Florida has scored eight perfect tens this year. Six for Keitra Hunter. Sloan has had two herself. One on the floor and one on the on event. This event. And it was in an away meet. Very rare. Hard to be absolutely perfect. Ariel Cartwell. Nice again. This is one of those moments in your life where it is defining. Exactly what she oh needs to do my. for herself, for her team, for gymnastics, for sports. It's so important to be able to get back up when life has knocked you down, and it knocked her down yesterday. She was distraught beyond words. What a comeback. This is just toughness personified. Scores before her, 9-9 nine, nine for Elena Johnson, 2 nine, eight, seven, fives for Boyce and Spicer. But that was more than a score. That was a victory in Talk many about levels. Getting back on the horse, she just galloped around this arena. Oh. Great scores over there. Woo, it's exciting in this arena. Jesse Dezeal. See if 
Nebraska came back on track on the uneven bars. Holly Blansky before her at 9 8. Jenny Lang, 9 8 2 5. Quattro. Bridget Sloan, 9 9 5. Now, different dynamics going here for Mackenzie. She had to follow Bridget in the semis and really come up big and get them back on track. So it's a different feeling. And a well trained athlete can handle something, either one. Something about momentum, and particularly on this event, it's all you can either get into a place where you just feel protected and you start hitting or it can be exactly the opposite team starts to panic well those cliches came from somewhere you know when the wheels come off or you get back on track it's all it's all of that and more and it starts with an inner toughness and the ability to put those things aside focus on the positive exactly what you want to get done. They're definitely building on that momentum. A little hop on the landing. Slight deduction there. Lauren Johnson, what a story here. Randy J, by the way, 9775, uncharacteristic for her. Lauren Johnson, a walk on, <laughs> and delivered a great vault at the SEC Championships to earn a share of the title. She only did vault like two times Amazing. the whole year for the Gym Dogs. Came up big. Well, it goes back to, I think it was Coach Dee Bro of LSU told us. She tells her girls everything counts. Everything, whether you do one event, four events. It's all important. Andy Wong, the anchor performer for Nebraska, definitely have a 9-0 and a 9-5. So we will drop the 9-0 for sure. They'll have to count the 9-5, but that adds a little extra pressure on this Wong for this performance. Petra Hunter now mounting the beam. Mackenzie Coquato before her had a 9-8-7-5. Florida has really found the ideal lineup for them. Um, and it's interesting that it's it's important to find that comfortable place for each gymnast in the lineup where they perform the best. Take a look at their scores. Three, nine, eight, seven, fives, and nine, nine, and a nine, nine, five. So excellent scores leading into Hunter's anchor position. The last half of the season, Keitra has performed so much better on balance being in this position. See if she can stick this double back. Not quite, but the routine was there. A happy Florida team with Bean behind them. <laughs> Tell me, that's got to be the biggest relief in gymnastics is okay. You can pretend that it doesn't kill you, but you got to say, hey, wait a minute. It's intense. You got to get to Bean before, yeah. Okay, this could be a highlight, folks. The most energetic in Amincio Hall. She has become an internet sensation for this entertaining and eclectic style. No doubt she has fun with it. And she can tumble. Gorgeous double layout. Junior out of Dallas, Texas, two-time SEC champion on this event. What an uncharacteristic stumble in the qualifying, and in fact did not qualify to the finals. A shock to many. Did not qualify to the individual finals. This pass, Barb, he wanted it. She wanted it so badly. 
action. Awkward landing after this tuck double back, but not here. Nails the landing on this pass for the team. She's happier with that, that's for sure. Best part of the routine, double layout. Just can't do it any better. So much power behind it. And she made certain she didn't move on that landing. Scored five perfect tens in her career on floor. Three of them this year. Up for Florida now on beam, Elena Johnson, the senior out of Tyler, Texas. Leading into this routine, Claire Boyce had a 9.875, Rachel Spicer had a 9.875. Coach Fain had to actually modify her balance beam routine because she's had stress fracture problems in her lower back. And so we really had to reconstruct her routine so it was easier on her body to get through that long season. That's when it's nice, um, the college code of points. It really allows for different ways to get the bonus points to get your routine up to the 10-0 start value. Allows for good parity among the teams. That's a nice routine, good landing. She really has had a tremendous championships from the semifinals, man, placing second in the all-around time. Nice dismount combination. Beautifully executed. Reagan Corville now for LSU on an event where they just knock it out of the park. We talk about how big their gymnastics is. Well, it's evident here. Look at the power. Opened up out of that Arabian double front. Coached by former LSU star Susan Jackson growing up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. <laughs> oh, look at the landing. <laughs> wow, I've never seen her expression like that at the end. <laughs> nice choreography, well performed. Huge connection with the audience. Great job. Normally very calm on the sidelines, but she's a little rowdy today. Good for Reagan Corville, the junior. On this pike double back, I thought her legs were just ever so slightly bent in that second somersault. No, it looked pretty straight from here, but the landing was superb. Look at that. <laughs> That's priceless. LSU is ready on call. Well, I just think that speaks for itself. Look at that. That's pure joy.
All right, when we come back in a few minutes, we'll update the scores from the fourth rotation. This is going to be a thriller. Welcome back to Birmingham. Here are the scores in the fourth rotation. Georgia, 49-25, on vault. Nebraska slipped a little bit on 9-5-5 on floor. So after the fourth rotation, Florida holds the lead, and their athletes are averaging over 9.9 her performance and Kathy Johnson Clark is with the head coach of the Florida Gators Rhonda Fain right now thanks Bart well we have all anticipated this rotation seeing you guys on balance beam talk about what that performance by all those women did it was incredible I, I really could not have asked for more the way they performed so far today they're lights out and they just left it all out on the floor and um, I, it was just it was incredible is everything following suit just the way expected? It's so close. Alabama went four nine nine fives on floor exercise. You're heading to floor. Your thoughts going into that routine? Well, we're really just focusing in on doing what we have to do with our routines. Going out and having fun, but most importantly, focusing only on what we have to do. Each gymnast in their routine and not getting caught up in anything else or the scores. And it's hard because of a lot going on. But so far, our team has remained really focused, and I have no doubt they're going to go out there and, and leave it all out. I was going to say, it's hard to do, but it best is. of luck to you. Thank it's you. exciting Thank to watch. Thank you. Gymnastics enthusiasts might remember that a year ago at the national championships out of UCLA, Florida had a disastrous rotation on the beam, had a count of fall, and still came back and was strong enough to win the Super Six finals. Not many gymnastics experts thought they could come all the way back, counting a miss, and still win. Katie Bailey leading off for Alabama on the bars. And Alabama is in a comfortable position. for the freshman out of North Carolina who's ranked 20th in the country, Jesse Jordan, set to vault for LSU in their leadoff performance. Oh, nice. Typically clean, high, and superb execution on the landing. We talk about how the judges don't actually take off for feet apart on the landing. But just to be sure, Jesse Jordan keeps them closer together than most, and sometimes her ankles are pinned together throughout. Clean execution in the leadoff role for a big event because Bob Moore, in charge of coaching their vault squad, has them in the right place at the right time. If LSU is going to make a run, it's going to be because of their gigantic vaults in this rotation. Sarah DeMeo and set for bars. Katie Bailey had a 9.85 in the leadoff. Lomincia on the vault. Bailey's leadoff score was a 9.85, setting up DeMeo. Oh, beautiful landing on that double layout. This is getting intense. It's as if they can do no wrong. I mean, it was already intense, but it is just building as the competition goes on. Just mounting the beam, Holly Bransky. Blansky from Nebraska, 9.6 was the leadoff score for Amanda Lauer. Brittany Ramsey on the vault. The first two vaulters for LSU, Jesse Jordan and Loy Mincia Hall, 9825s. They've actually seen 
typically bigger scores for LSU on ball. A little tight there, but they didn't really power those landings, did they? No, they're, they're getting great distance, but you want to see a combination of height and distance on the vault. A little bit of a pike down. She got the landing, but unfortunately piked a little bit to get it. Join in progress, Chase Caps. For Oklahoma on the floor. Taylor Spears led off with a 9-9. Sooner's doing great today. Such a well choreographed floor routine. Absolutely gorgeous. And this could be a huge vault for LSU. Oh. Just a full twist. She's capable of doing a one and a half. They are going for clean, big. They want to make no mistakes. Ashley has so much power. Nice block off the table. Good height, finishes it above the level of the table. Kim Jacob on the bars now for Alabama. Scores there. Bailey had a 9.85. Sarah DeMeo a 9.95. Asia Sims a 9.85. And Alabama's confidence has just grown really since we first saw them compete against Florida, if you'll remember, in the dual meet. And they pulled out a win at home against the top-ranked Florida Gators. Oh, my, oh, my goodness. goodness. Excellent landing. Then on to the SEC Championships. It is just built from them. Brian Lashilla in charge of getting them ready on the bars. You see Sarah Patterson and David Patterson. They have won six NCAA championships. They know how to do it, and they know how to beat the team at the right time. Amanda Jetter now. Kim Jacobs score a the big score that they that we've been seeing from Alabama but they've got such great scores in the bank so far double front hard to land over rotate just a little bit and hop forward Megan Corville this is one of the biggest vaults in the country now no doubt she gets some huge distance let's see if she can pop it up off the table as well okay it'll be interesting to see what they do with the vault mm -hmm. it's great distance Nice height, good landing, but she's slightly piped forward, and they're really looking for the chest up on the landing. She didn't quite get the pop off the no. vaulting table that she normally does, even no. though she managed to put the landing down. She usually lands standing straight up and down. She's so high from the horse. Reigning NCAA vault champ. Taylor Spears for the Sooners on floor. Jesse Jordan. 
beautiful how her tumbling goes right into the dance and the dance right into the tumbling, a really complete routine. She and, and several of the other Oklahoma gymnasts don't have the big, gigantic tumbling passes as some of the other teams. But where they score points is in their elegance, the choreography, the cleanness of their gymnastics, the execution. It seemed as if that clean execution was rewarded well in the semifinal round. And that led to a 9-9 for Taylor Spears in a leadoff role for the Sooners. Performer Amanda Jetter at 985. So there are two 995s and three 985s for Alabama leading into this routine. And Clark is incredible. And she's capable of a huge score. She had trouble getting the dismount in the semis. Let's see if she can pull it off here. Double layout. Oh. Much better. Oh, that is going to put a smile on her face, if not tears in her eyes. It's almost a duplicate of the SEC championships four weeks ago in this very building when Caitlin Clark nailed an anchor performance on the beam to help Alabama win their SEC title. Jenny Lang from Alabama. Holly Blansky before her had a 9-9 in this event. Nebraska, as we mentioned in the qualifying round, was just flat lights out on beam. No wobbles, very aggressive. Seemed like the scores were getting elevated by that time in the meet, and they took advantage of it because they just nailed their routines, and the scores were there for them. Well, there was an excitement because they definitely hit. Absolutely, they were solid. Um, but the one thing that, we, that I think the judges have to be careful is to make sure that they're checking for deductions for not showing full split or completely straight legs and high toes. Miley Kaneva now for the Sooners on the floor. Beautiful pike full in. Laura Albright before her in 995, and the three previous scores all 99. And the two stars coming up now, Paneva, and then Haley Skamen is their anchor performer, and she has scored a perfect 10 earlier this year. see that in her presentation. She is a very outgoing young lady. Definitely enjoyed that choreography. Again, are the tumbling passes as huge as some of that we've seen? No, but the elegance is there, the, the complete package in terms of nice choreography, composition. This was her most difficult pass, full twisting double back. She pulls it around, lands with the chest a little bit forward. The judges can take a little deduction for those. But they're tiny, they do add up. And she pulled that landing out. LSU, Sari Morrison with a great bar routine. Let's see what she can do now on the ball. Ooh. Nice ball. Didn't quite get the stuck landing we've seen in the past. You know, they've just been a little off there. They just haven't really, uh, I'd say, gotten lucky on landings, have they? No, and this, it happened at the last national championships as well. They have huge vaults. They didn't quite come up with 
where they can be so big. They really improved on their other events, though, so they're putting together a solid effort. This could be a highlight here. Haley Skamen, mentioned earlier, scored a perfect 10 on the floor this season on this event. She has the combination of the powerful tumbling and the interesting photos. Looking big, big double layout. Great addition to this team, really, you know, to show that power and difficulty. Coach Kindler knew that a couple of years ago. She said, I have to start recruiting more leg event athletes who can give me big tumbling, big balls. Because if there was one critique of the Sooners, it was that they just were underpowered. But that is becoming no longer the case. Uh, Molly could never before her a 9-9. So the Sooners have four 9-9s and a 9-5 coming into this. The layout was really well done. Good to see an opening tumbling run like this on this Oklahoma team. And as you mentioned, the choreography is really special to it. Five, the score for Haley Skamen. So the Sooners, four nine nines and two nine nine fives on floor in this rotation. Now for the Oklahoma Sooners, Laura Albright, a senior out of Carrollton, Texas. Club training at the World Olympic Gymnastic Academy. Wow, you look pretty. Double twist. Terrific presentation. That wraps up the fifth rotation, the sixth and final rotation coming up when we go back don't go away by northwestern mutual proud to be an official corporate partner of the nca 9325 on vault alabama 4955 on bars nebraska 49125 on beam oklahoma 496 on floor exercise no score below 99 for the sooner so here are the scores lsu and nebraska are done they have completed their four performances. LSU, the leader in the clubhouse, so to speak, with a 197.6.
Nebraska has a 196-5. Alabama, Oklahoma, Florida, and Georgia will wrap it up in this sixth and final rotation. Kathy Johnson-Clark is down on the floor with Dee Dee Bro, the head coach of the LSU Tigers, the leaders in the clubhouse. Kathy? So, Didi, your team is in the clubhouse, and I saw a lot of improvements from the semifinals. Your assessment of the team's performance? I thought we did better. I thought we had much more inspired performance today. I thought the kids just went out and, and competed. There, there was no real tightness. But with that, we didn't stick the landings that we needed to stick. There were just some places that we just gave away tents throughout the meet. But, you know, you have to come to this thing and get it into Super 6 and compete and not make it a few times. And I think that our kids got a taste of it last year, got a taste of it this year. They know what it's like to be in this meet. And, you know, look how many teams have not won the national championship in gymnastics. So, you know, we're just going to go back home and plug and train for next year. Absolutely. One more step in the right direction. So it's a great season, Coach. Thank oh, you absolutely. so much. Thanks, Kathy. Congratulations to the LSU Tigers, Dee Dee Bro in her 37th year, the dean of the coaches in the SEC, and uh, her enthusiasm and drive never fluctuates. She's always out there digging and fighting and hoping to win. We wish them well. One minute remaining in the touch, one minute. for the Florida Gators. Claire Boyce was in this position four weeks ago in this very building in a leadoff role for Florida. And she was not at her best. Put pressure on the rest of the team. And allowed Alabama to step up and seal the victory. So we'll see what she can deliver this time. She gets another chance. Well, she delivered on Dean. Tommy Twist, beautiful. This rotation we have Oklahoma on the wall. Georgia on the bars, Alabama on the beam, and Florida on the floor. Absolutely, that's got to feel so good to come back and do such a great job in your position and in this arena. I mean, the place is going crazy for Alabama over on balance game. It's not the easiest arena to compete in for the other schools, and they're doing a great job. First falter for the Sooners, Madison Mooring. Usually does a Yurchenko with a half twist. Nice. 
Nice separation from the flip and the twist. You could really see her set it up, wait, and then twist and spot the ground. DeAndre Milliner now for Alabama on the beam. I'm not sure if you would like to finish on beam or start on beam. I don't think anybody likes to do anything on beam. <laughs> uh, DeAndre Milliner's been in this leadoff role many, many times. Spicer. Floor. Clear voice, by the way. 987. Oh, oh. Bit of a balance break there. Really fought to save it. Oh. Oh, oh goodness gracious. Mm. Up until this point, this meet has been golden. Nothing the Crimson Tide could do was wrong. was really all with Alabama. Still is, really. They can they can drop this score, but it's a lot of pressure on the remaining teams, certainly. Florida's doing what they need to do on floor with Boyce and now Spicer. Oklahoma doing well on the ball. Florida has to concentrate on every single tumbling run, nail the landings. In the background, George is on the uneven bars. Randy J had a 9-9 in the leadoff roll. Cat hires a 9-8-5. Georgia, however, not in contention for the team title in this final rotation. So we'll be focusing on Florida, Oklahoma, and Alabama. Kili Kamichik for the Sooners. Carol Levon had a 9.85. So did Madison Mooring. <laughs> Very nice landing. Excellent power on that ball. Katie Bailey now for Alabama. After Milliner's 9.3, Sarah DeMeo came up with a big 9.9. Interesting the composition of this team for Alabama with the leadership of the seniors and a huge influx of freshmen, including Katie Bailey. And the freshmen have really been unreal throughout the season. They have stepped into the lineup with ease, really, and have been a huge part of their success. But she seems cool up there. Elena Johnson. Starting on the floor, Rachel Spicer before her, 9-9. Nine, nine. Exceptionally well here. It's been 10 years of these championships since a team has won this Super Six final with a score of 198 or better. And I think we're going to see a 198 or better. It's going to take that as strong as these teams are in this final rotation. The Sooners on the ball. Ely Kamichek before her had a 9 9. Oh! Huh. Everywhere you turn, there's incredible gymnastics going on it's in this just, building. It's really incredible. Every single event. And what a thrill to see so many young ladies just thriving and. And putting Nailed it out there. It. They amazing. are doing exactly 
everything they can possibly do. Boy, she came close to that line. Chase Caps for the Sooners. Up on the vault, Kaneva had a 9-9, so the Sooners have two 9-8-5s. Two 9-9s. Caps and Skamen will be their final two vaulters. Oh, another stuff landing. Unbelievable. I mean, sticks are catching sometimes, and they caught it. The Ran Sooners right through this team. Quite stick <laughs> those landings in the semifinals. Missed a couple of opportunities there. Whoa. Lou Ball, who is the assistant coach and the husband of KJ Kindler, he's in charge of vaulting. He's happy. Elena Johnson has a 9 9, so the two 9 9s for Florida are Spicer and Johnson, 9875 for Claire Boyce. Bridget Sloan is impeccable here. It's a tall order, but these next few gymnasts really need to go way over 9 9. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're seeing some gigantic store, scores. It's almost as if the gymnasts have now superseded the rules because there are so many scores in that 9 9 to 10 range. It's almost like they need to recalibrate a little bit because the gymnasts are so good and the competition is so keen. Well, and there's very little separation between good routines and great routines anymore. There's more to their routines than just stuck landings, and, and we need to see that in the scores. So I'm sure there'll be discussions after this beautiful double pike and a great landing. the disappointment of balance being yesterday and not doing her part for the team. One more landing for Bridget Sloan is all she needs this year for the Gators. Woohoo, that oh, nice. is exciting. I mean, this is crazy. such a perfectionist and has such excellent training in terms of her execution and she can just call upon it any time she wants it. Guaranteed a big score waiting for Bridget Sloan. We go back to the vault for the Sooners. Haley Skamen chase caps before her a 9-9-5. Oh! Beautiful position there. Notice how she opened up out of that full Threw the arms out to the side. Really performed that vault. Didn't just execute it. And the trademark stuck landing for this team on this event is incredible. Really improved on this event from last year. Amazing. We'll expect a big score there for Skamen. In fact, it's a 9.95, so the Sooners will be over 198. <laughs> And yet Florida and Alabama are not done. Keisha Hunter now. Bridget Sloan had a 9-9-2-5. Keisha has scored a 10 with this routine. Highly capable, loves the choreography, loves performing this routine.
Frog double back. That is amazing. She had a little trouble in semifinals on that last tumbling pass. Not here. That was fantastic. Former NCAA all-around champion doing her part for the Gators. They're fighting to the very, very end. On the beam now for Alabama. Sarah DeMeo, this routine is critical. DeAndre Miller had a 9-3 milliner. Beautiful posture on this event, really stretches, shows off every element, every position. Very deliberate. This is a great routine. If she can stick the landing, it will be huge. Oh, Look at that. Great. Back double back. Great difficulty. And the excitement builds. Oh my gosh, they are doing so great. The Oklahoma Sooners have completed ball. 198 175 is their team score. Bridget Coquato, the final performer now for Florida. Keetra Hunter had a 995. So by our calculations, she needs a 9-9-7-5 to win it for the Gators. Oh, goodness gracious. Go ahead of the Sooners. She's been in this position before. Front double twist. A month ago, we were in this very building when she over-rotated her last tumbling pass. Stepped out of bounds. allowed Alabama to win their eighth SEC title. Once again, she finds herself in a crucial role. A young sophomore from Naperville, Illinois. Very nice amplitude on the jump. Yesterday's semi, she had a 9-8 box, so she had to be significantly better today. Best routine I've seen her do thus far this season, really. If she can land this pike double back, it has to be perfect. Well, they've done everything they can possibly do. That's as well as she can perform that routine. It's in the judges' hands. Oklahoma on the sidelines. They are done with vault. They are waiting to see the final score for the Florida Gators on floor. They think they've done enough. 198-175. Have a nice round of applause for all the gymnasts competing here tonight from Florida. Our caller, Bridgie Coquato. She was a cool character throughout this routine, wasn't she? And she was pulling with everything she had to get that around. A little over-rotated on that event. Oh my gosh, 995. So a 995 for Bridgie Caguardo.
What? <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> oh. We said she needed a 9975 to win it. She gets a 995. Devastation for Alabama to go from such a high throughout the entire competition to the final routine. They had to count a fall. And it was as if coming into the beam they could do no wrong. Alabama was on a roll. And they've been in this situation before, having to Absolutely. finish it out on beam with big scores. And it just wasn't there for them tonight. Stunt pro Alabama crowd. No question about it. It's the Sooners and the Gators. Enjoy a special moment. We're still checking to confirm the scores according to our official results page. Oklahoma has 198-175. Florida, the same identical score. If it's a tie, there is no tiebreaker. There is no tiebreaking procedure. So if it's a tie, they will both be co-NCAA team champions. So another team has entered that very, very rare air <laughs> of being one of those special teams to win a national championship in gymnastics. Now two years in a row. First Florida does it. Now Oklahoma. Florida, Florida gets to repeat. Together. Now for the award ceremony. Honoring our Super 16 from the night's 2014 National Collegiate Women's Gymnastics Championships. Awards are presented tonight by the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Committee. Sixth place with a total score of 196.50, the University of Nebraska. The University of Nebraska, as we said, uh, thrilled to make the Super Six Finals. And uh, congratulations to them. That's an important feat, and they had to edge out former national champions Utah and UCLA in a thrilling semi-final yesterday and they laid it all out on the table yesterday and uh, came up with a 196.5 today an average of 9.825 per performance they've scored counted scores What are the chances that they actually have two championship trophies in the building? Unlikely. Speechless.
continues as the Gators and the Sooners revel in this moment. And a very appreciative audience cheers on Alabama, who ends up in fourth place. 197.55. So sixth is Nebraska, 196.5. Georgia, 197.05. Alabama drops to fourth after disappointment on the beam without question. LSU will end up third at 197.6. They weren't even on the floor in the last rotation. In fact, they were on a bye. was started back in 1981 by Coach Paul Zer, who was also the coach of the men's program and has gone on to win eight NCAA championships for the men. But this, for the women, is the first. I think tonight we talked about it was going to come down to execution because there's a lot of parity in women's collegiate gymnastics. That was a key factor. Yeah, it? we knew the big things were going to be stuck landings, hit the handstands, obviously hit your big skills, no misses. But it was also going to be the little things that separated them, the clean form and execution. I think the judges did reward that with this Oklahoma team. And that's, it's great to see. It's great for gymnastics to have another national championship team join those ranks. So they will take turns 
standing behind the national champion poster. AJ Kindler with the Sooners and Ronda Fane with the Gators. Coach Kindler in her ninth season, she's the only coach in NCAA history to take two teams to the Super Six Finals. And now she's a winner with the Oklahoma Sooners. And we need to stress how incredibly close Alabama came to just winning this thing outright. It comes down to just one little uh, a miss. Puts the pressure on, and then if there's another miss routine, that's it. And they, they dropped to fourth, but had an extraordinary competition up to that point. They were incredible, really. Oklahoma had a turning point in their season when they lost a home meet to LSU. And Coach Kindler approached the young ladies and said, all right, let's see how much pride you have, because the following week they went again head-to-head -head against LSU in a neutral location and beat them. Well, how's this for a shot that has never been taken? Two teams sharing the floor as NCAA champions. Enough excitement to go around. We said coming into today's competition, this could be the most wide open NCAA championship. And the way the competition was going, as tight as it was, this seems like an unlikely result, considering Alabama had it in their hands. Didn't they? they absolutely had it in their hands, and then the huge crowd support, and it just seemed inevitable is what it really felt like. And it just goes to show you, I mean, it's why you have the meet, it's why you play the game, things happen. Nice to see LSU so excited, thrilled with the third place finish. They had a great competition. As Dee, Dee said, not their best, not the best they could do, but they had a great competition. We've always been wondering which would be the next program that stands atop the podium coming in tonight. There were only five teams that had won the NCAA championship in 33 years. Now there are six. Here are the results in the final rotation. Oklahoma's one of their highest vault scores in program history, 49-5-5. Georgia, the number one team in the country on bars, completely overlooked in that rotation, but they were no longer in the team hunt, 49-5-2-5. Alabama, this is shocking, 48-8-5. They had a chance to win it in front of an adoring crowd in Florida, 49-625. One of their highest scores in their program history on the floor. And here are the final standings. Oklahoma and Florida share the national championship, 198-175. LSU is in third.
It's now time for our Pick You Up Moments of the Meet, brought to you by Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Chase Caps, and Haley Skamen for the Sooners on the vault. In the final rotation, drilled 9.95s. So it came down to Bridget Coquato needing a 9.95 on floor of her own to tie. 9.975 to win. What does she get? A 9.95 helping the Florida Gators earn their share of the national championship. That's our Enterprise Renicar pick you up moment of the meet. And Kathy Johnson-Clark is with both winning coaches. Kathy. And if I can quote Rhonda Fain, holy cow, 
This was an unbelievable finish to an incredible national championship. A tie, never been done. You got to do it first. You, yep. d you repeated as national champion. And you guys, for the first time ever right. in your program's history, national champions. Tell us about that final rotation, what it felt like down on the floor. It was absolutely incredible. I mean, our athletes, I mean, they knew it was on the line, and they just competed their hearts out, and I told them, just don't hold back. Just let it all go, and I saw exactly that. And they just fed off of one another, and, I mean, we couldn't have asked for more from them tonight. I mean, they just were lights out, and I have to congratulate Oklahoma because it couldn't have happened to a better person, and I respect KJ more than anything, and I, I'm, so, I'm so happy for the both of us. And KJ, you knew it all along. You knew your girls could do this, but that final event, vault, every single landing, one right after the other, stick after stick. What did it feel like from down on the floor? It was amazing. I mean, if you remember last season, vault was the thing that kind of kept us from, from finishing. And, and this meet, we did not do that. And Lou Ball worked his heart out as the vault team did, right, all year long. And Lou's going to dance, right? Yeah! We couldn't have done anything better. Like, that was the best that we could deliver, and I'm just so proud of our team. You both were fantastic. Thanks for a great show. Let's hear it from all the girls. Congratulations, team. Wow. For a spectacular finish. Never before has any one team scored this high, and they both got 198-175 oh to share the national championship. And once again, the final results of the 2014 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. Oklahoma and Florida with 198-175 share the title. LSU third, Alabama fourth, Georgia fifth, and Nebraska sixth. Tonight's contest, it seemed it was Alabama's destiny in front of a home crowd to secure the national title, but it wasn't to be. It was one of the widest open competitions I've seen in NCAA history. It came down to the final rotation and it was a tie. So for Kathy Johnson Clark, I'm Bar Connor saying so long from Birmingham, Alabama. Congratulations to the Oklahoma Sooners and the Florida Gators for their incredible, inspiring national championship performance tonight. This has been a presentation of ESPN.